This, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly how you build a baller gaming PC. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be talking about what's all inside this baller gaming PC. I'll talk about why I chose all these parts specifically, and I'll even include some alternate parts if you're thinking about replicating this build. And then of course, we're going to benchmark it with some smack talking gameplay. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, an online key reseller with our favorite Windows 10 Pro keys. If you're looking to remove that nasty Windows 10 unactivated watermark on your latest gaming PC, head on down to the links in the description. Here you'll find a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for under 17 bucks, but we want it cheaper than that. Select buy now and enter the discount code ZTT18 for an exclusive 18% off discount, which drops the price down to just 13 bucks. Go through the rest of the purchasing options. I'd recommend PayPal and within a a minute or so you'll get your Windows 10 Pro key. Now on your PC, click start and type in activation and press enter, choose change product key, paste in your new key, and bang, Windows 10 is now activated. This is my personal way of activating my PCs. Check out my purchased order history here. So grab a Windows 10 key for yourself with the link in the description using discount code ZTT18. All right, so let's just jump straight in the parts list for this build. But real quickly, I want to remind you that I do live stream all of my gaming PC builds over on twitch.tv slash zaxtechturf. And also be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell here on YouTube. The first part up is this case and big thanks to Antec for sending this one out and sponsoring this part of today's build guide. This here is the absolute beauty Antec DF600 Flux which just looks so good in my opinion. I was so excited to build inside of here after seeing the kind of hybrid approach it takes to the front panel design. There's still a plastic see-through piece which is nice for aesthetics because you can see the colored RGB fans but unlike most cases there's actually much more room for airflow than there normally is. These new Flux cases are all about providing adequate airflow through the multi-chamber design, and you'll see soon in the benchmarking section that our temperatures were very cool for this build. The DF600 Flux has an MSRP of only $70, which is something I can definitely get behind, especially for a case that looks this good and even comes with a built-in ARGB controller and fan hub in the back. I also really like how it came included with three ARGB fans, especially at this low of a price point, but since the rear fan was just black, I ended up swapping them all out for a complete Antec kit, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Next up is the CPU, I decided to change things up a bit as I went with this Intel i5-10600K which is rocking 6 cores and 12 threads with a very fast max boost clock of 4.8 GHz right out of the box. Big thanks to Micro Center for the very last second request I sent them for sending this one out. Just want to give props that they overnighted this part so that I could finish this build guide on time. And you guys already know this by now that Micro Center is my favorite physical store for PC hardware and especially those juicy CPU and motherboard combo deals. Links to this CPU and everything that I talk about today are linked down in the description. The 10600K certainly isn't a crowd favorite in today's day and age, especially when you can get an 8 core Ryzen 7 3700X for the same price point, but if you're only interested in high end gaming with the maximum amount of FPS, this is still a really good option for a CPU. The 10600K also has some very nice potential to be overclocked, but you'll need to make sure you pair it with a proper motherboard. Speaking of which, this is the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4, and hopefully just by looking at these B-roll shots you'll know exactly why I chose this one. The Extreme 4 is rocking an incredible black, gray, and blue color scheme which matches our build perfectly, and I'm not ashamed to admit that that's why I mostly chose this motherboard. This Z490 board is definitely packing some solid features though, like the PCIe 4.0 M.2 socket, base frequency boost technology, heat dissipating PCB technology, and it even has a 2.5 gigabit LAM port. Moving on, we have the RAM, and this is yet another kit of the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB, but don't worry, I think this was the last kit that I have down here in my studio. This continues to be my favorite looking RAM kit on the market right now, and that's why you continue to see it in my videos, and this kit is clocked at 3200 megahertz. Next up is the graphics card, and during the Twitch live stream, twitch.tv slash by the way, I initially installed my XFX RX 5700 XT, but that actually ended up dying on me, like completely dead and unusable, so I had to make a last minute audible and I threw in a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super. The 2060 Super is still a monster card and compares quite well with the 5700 XT. The 2060 Super is going to get a little bit less FPS than the 5700 XT, but now I have those added NVIDIA benefits such as that super valuable NVIDIA encoder, and I can even try ray tracing now if I wanted to. After that, we have the SSD, and here I decided to go with the crucial P1 500 gigabyte drive that you guys have also seen in a ton of my build guides. We aren't necessarily taking advantage of a Gen 4 drive or anything, but the P1 continues to provide a very fast NVMe DRAM SSD with 2000 over 1700 read and write speeds at a great price. And finally, for our last core component of this build, we 
have the power supply. This was also sent out by Antec, and this is the Neo Eco Gold 700 watt unit. This beast is 80 plus gold certified, rated tier B on the LTT list, and although I like that it's rocking all black cables, it's not a modular design. I also ended up taking the stickers off both the top and the side of the power supply so they weren't loud and yellow, which doesn't fit the color scheme of this build. Now next up, we definitely have a few aesthetic parts, which you guys know I do not add to the final parts list price because they don't add anything in terms of gaming performance, but you kind of need them to make a build look this baller. First up is our CPU cooler, and this is the Deepcool GamerStorm Captain 240 Pro AIO Liquid Cooler. During the live stream, I actually installed this up at the front, and then Gamers Nexus made that video about how you should never put your AIO tubes up towards the top because that decreases the life of the unit over time, so I decided to move it over here towards the rear so we achieve the optimal tubes down position. Now you're not going to get that fresh cold air from the intake fans like how I originally had it, moving it back towards the exhaust fans is probably only going to make a couple of a degrees difference, but if Gamers Nexus says to do it this way, I'm just going to do it this way. Another aesthetic part choice we have are these RGB fans. These are also from Antec and these are the Prism ARGB kit, which you've definitely seen in my build guides before. You can either use the controller box buttons to control the RGBs or plug them right into your motherboard, which is what I did so you get the most control of your color scheme. And speaking of that color scheme, the last part I have here today are these PSU cable extensions. These are the ones from Easy DIY, and I absolutely love the color of them. This completely ties our all black and blue aesthetic together quite nicely, and I've definitely been buying these in a ton of my build guides lately. With that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like. Once again, you definitely don't have to go with all of these aesthetic choices if you're trying to replicate this build with the same amount of gaming performance. Before getting into the benchmarks, I do want to quickly supply you guys with a list of alternative parts if you were thinking about replicating this build. If you are one of those anti-Intel builders at this point, you could certainly switch out the 10600K for a Ryzen 7 3700X, which would give you 8 cores and 16 threads. You could definitely save some more money on the RAM with a cheaper model like the Corsair Vengeance LPX kit, and I would personally spend that extra money on a bigger SSD, especially if you play Warzone. And then finally, if you don't want to spend as much money on the aesthetics, a simple $30 pack of the 5 up here RGB fans will get most of the job done for you with just that. With the parts list out of the way, it's now time for the benchmarks, which since I started recording my gameplay with the webcam is definitely becoming my favorite part of these videos now, but I just want to quickly mention that I did not overclock this PC for these benchmarks. I know a lot of you in the Twitch chat said that you wanted to see me overclock this system, but I really just want to provide the numbers that you'll see right out of the box. That way as a viewer, you don't have to worry about who got the better silicone lottery or who's the better overclocker or anything like that. Just know that if you overclock this system that just turned off in front of me right now, you would get like five to 10 more FPS than the numbers that I'm about to show. I did decide to test every game in 1080p today, mostly on ultra settings except for the competitive titles, but just know that you could certainly enjoy some AAA games in 1440p resolution if you wanted to. The first game up was Fortnite and in 1080p in pro settings, I got a ridiculously high FPS average of 321. The 1% low was even very solid too, as you would expect from an Intel CPU, but I'll just let the Fortnite Guad take over for the rest of this gameplay footage. Oh, oh hello, sir. Hello, dude, I'm in. You, you can't mess with me, man. Fortnite Guad is in his habitat. Get out of here. Oh, hello. You're just gonna pop down here out of nowhere? You're dead. Go home. Oh, there they are. Oh, we got two of them here. Did somebody just steal my kill? Yeah, just just hide behind the wall, man. Headshot. I need a cup of coffee after that kill. What is this dude doing? Headshot. There's one. Hello. No weapon for you. Goodbye. Try again. Spawn back in later. Come back. You're dead. The next game up was Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Finally figured out how to benchmark this game again ever since the trusted mode launch. And in 1080p and pro settings, I got 207 frames per second. Terrible shooting, but I'll take the win. Can we get another one? Can we get a double kill, please? Haha, <laughs> there it is. Double kill, baby. Let's go. Oh, I hear some more. I hear more action. Triple kill? There it is. All right, we got to get a we got to get a podium position here. There's one kill. Okay, we're getting closer. There's two kills. Here we go. Can we get a third? Oh, hello. Ooh, there's three kills. Come on, let's go. Oh. Wow, that dude sucked. Oh, it was a bot, of course. All right, I gotta get some good kills for the benchmarking video. I mean, that's not a great kill. That dude was just standing there. Can we get a double kill, though? Is this bot gonna spawn? Oh, wait, hello. Hello. Ah, gotcha. Headshot. You dead. You're dead. Uh oh, I heard somebody. 
Hello. You're dead. This guy is still spinning. Let's do some headshot practice. What's this dude doing? What? There we go. <laughs> you did. Following that was Horizon Zero Dawn. I actually just made a dedicated benchmarking video on this one, by the way. Really wish I had more time to just sit down and play this. And in 1080p and ultra settings, I got 78 frames per second. Following that was Rainbow Six Siege. And with the built-in benchmarking tool, even though you're seeing some gameplay here in 1080p and ultra settings, I got 322 FPS. Valorant was up next. This one I'm still really enjoying since they added the short attention span game modes like Team Deathmatch and Spike Rush, which is perfect for people like me. And in 1080p and high settings, I got 266 frames per second. Yeah. Valorant team deathmatch mode is really only where the good players play. See? Dominating this mode, man. Can we get a double? Yep, see? Domination. Oh, hello. Headshot. Behind me, too? You want some of this? Headshot. Up here to the left, I think. Finesse it? That's how you finesse it, man. I'm feeling a multi-kill coming up here. There's one. There's two. Long shot? Headshot too. Let's go. Possible Valorant God in the making? Maybe. Oh boy. I think so. Gears 5 followed after that, just pushing my way through the campaign for this one during these benchmarking runs, and in 1080p and ultra settings I got an FPS average of 93. After that was Borderlands 3, same thing with this one as I'm only making progress through this campaign during these benchmarking runs, and in 1080p with ultra settings I got a very nice 74 FPS average. After that was Far Cry New Dawn, remember I added this one and the next game because of your voting on the YouTube community tab, and in 1080p and ultra settings I got 109 FPS. Assassin's Creed Odyssey followed after that, and using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p ultra settings I got 66 FPS and finally for our last game in this 10 game benchmarking run liking the video shows you appreciate this huge amount of benchmarks by the way here in Call of Duty multiplayer in 1080p high settings I got 121 frames per second Call of Duty time man not to be confused with Warzone this is where the real pros are here in multiplayer this is how we do it you're dead sit down oh how is that not a double oh, wow headshot on the last shot okay Somebody else? Yep, you too? I think we can get one more right up here. Yep, there it is. I told you. Oh, we'll get one more. There we go. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Just stop. Let's try and get a sniper kill here. This has got to be a good spot. Ooh, that's how we do it, man. Look at this dude sniping. Watch this. <laughs> You're dead. I want to get some more snipes. There we go. That's how we do it. This is my sniper spot. Get out of the way, man. I got this. Just get out of the way here. There's got to be somebody coming here. Get out of my way. See? I, g I got this on lock, man. What's this dude doing up here? Dude, sit down. Just don't really like this map, man. Just a little bit too much chaos here. I mean, it's fun to rack up the kills and whatnot. Sometimes it's just too easy, though. He says I'm getting tapped. Oh, don't try and sneak up on me, man. Come on now. Sniper time. You're dead. UAV doesn't help there, buddy. Doesn't help you either. Hello. I'll just own this corner for now. There we go. Is this sniper still camping up here? Has nobody finished him off yet? Oh, come on. I did want to include a 3D mark time, so I benchmark here at the end because I know some of you want a consistent reference point, and this $1,250 system racked up a score of 8,690. So yeah, this system definitely packs a punch with super high FPS numbers, and if you're looking to get even more inspiration for your next gaming PC, make sure you head on over to the ZTD Discord channel. Here we have channels dedicated to build guides from both me and the community, and there's even a ZTD deals channel to help save you some money. Just like always, be sure to let me know what you thought of this build and what you would do to personally change it, and finally, I hope you enjoyed this video.